the dice stay high. So let me shoot the seven with every shot. Viva Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Lady Love, please let the... Welcome to Vegas Talk Radio. The internet radio show about the news, people, entertainment, opportunities, and events in the best resort and vacation destination and fastest growing city in America, Las Vegas, Nevada. If it's worth your time and money, you'll hear about it here. And now, here's your host, Charlie Bass. Well, on today's show, we have a special guest. We have a guy who needs no introduction because he's been playing for longer than most of us can remember, and actually probably longer than he wants to remember, but he's most famous, I guess, for the scene with Annette Funicello, which I remember as a kid and, and still remember today, and he performs all over the world. He's coming to Las Vegas, and he comes here quite often. His name is Frankie Avalon. Frankie, how are you doing? I'm fine, Charlie. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Let me ask you a question. One thing that I read in your bio is that you came out of, I think it was out of the East Coast, Philadelphia area. That's right. What was the cause of all these entertainers coming out of Philadelphia back in the 50s and 60s? What was the You know, that's not only the 50s and 60s. You know what's really amazing, Charlie? If you go back into time and into history about the people who have come out of Philadelphia, it is incredible. I mean, uh, dating back to uh, uh, the Barrymores, I mean, hmm. Mario Lanza, uh, Eddie Fisher, uh, you're talking about uh, James Darren, Bobby Rydell, my buddy, uh, Fabian, it goes on and on and on. The reason I have no explanation except to the fact that it's a neighborhood, it's ethnic people that uh, uh, survive together and... Uh, created something that has been going for years. Now, with all these talented people in, in Philadelphia, how did, you, how did you get discovered? I mean, how did that big break come for you? Well, you know, Charlie, that's, uh, that's something that started way, way, way young, meaning for me being about 10, 11 years old. I was a trumpet player, hmm. and I had studied uh, with a uh, renowned uh, trumpet teacher named Rosenfeld of the Philadelphia Orchestra, and I got some recognition as a trumpet player, and I appeared on the Jackie Gleason show, the Honeymooners. I appeared as a young boy of 11, 12 years old. I, I was on RCA Victor Records, and uh, that developed into uh, quite a career for me. And of course, uh, my responsibility is going to school. Uh, I had to go to school, and I went to school. And on weekends, I would play these little rock and roll places on the Jersey Shore. Now I was with a band called Rocco and the Saints. And a new record company came in, liked the band, signed us to a contract, and I did one side as a vocalist, and the other side we were an instrumentalist. And uh, from there on in, it started to snowball, and I went on my own as the vocalist and started to create some songs, and Dee Dee Dine in 1957 came along, my first hit record, and then that snowballed into motion pictures and clubs and television and what have you, and here I am today. Well, you've, you've done it all. Now, of all the things you've done, I mean, movies and television and, and, and records and performances, I mean, of those, what was your, I guess, your, your favorite thing that you did, or is there a favorite? Well, you know, i got I got to tell you, uh, Charlie, that's an interesting question, because, you know, at the time, when I was involved in doing something, I was very much into it, so it was very important to me and very enjoyable. Example, it's uh, when I was uh, singing and, and making recordings, uh, a studio was very important to me, and then all the appearances. And then when I was doing motion pictures, that was very important to me, so I enjoyed that. And, of course, uh, now to sum it up, I still enjoy performing, and that's why I'll be at the Orleans in 
uh, with my friend Bobby Rydell, and we've been playing for the last five, six years, and we have a great time. Now, did you guys know each other growing up? Yeah, I've known Bobby Rydell, uh, whose name was Robert Ridarelli, since he's been about uh, six, seven years old, and uh, so we've been friends from the neighborhood all these years. That's absolutely amazing. I mean, after all these years, the, I know the, the, the both hit you know the pinnacles of your careers, and then still be performing. But you knew each other as kids. That's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I say I, as we're summing up our show uh, when we're on stage. I say, you know, we're two guys who used to hang out on the corners of South Philadelphia. Now we hang out on a stage and have a great time. That's wonderful. <laughs> Now, how often do you come to Las Vegas? God, no, I've seen you. I play at least twice a year, if not more. Uh, sometimes it's a three, four, but uh, basically it's always at least uh, twice a year. And I've been playing Las Vegas since 1960. Is when I was under contract to the Sands Hotel for uh, my initial appearance in Las Vegas. Well, I think it's safe to say that you know the town pretty well by now. Yeah, I, I've seen it grow and grow and grow, and it's still growing. It is. It's just it's just an amazing thing, because if you go away for a year and you come back, it's a whole different city, it seems like. I know. Now, tell me about the movies and stuff that you did. I mean, what what kinds of movies did you do, and, and what kinds of roles were your favorite roles when you played? Well, you know, Charlie, when I first started in the motion pictures, um, I was introduced uh, and and by Warner Brothers with a motion picture called Guns of the Timberland, which was the, the star of the, the film, was a great star, Alan Ladd and Jeannie Crane and Gilbert Rowland. And I had about the fourth lead, so that really introduced me to the, uh, to the acting world. And then from there I did the Alamo with John Wayne and a picture with Ernie Kovacs and Bob Hope and, um, oh God, the, the list goes on and on, before I even started the Beach Party series. So I've been making films as an actor. Now you've played with it with the biggest names in in Hollywood history. Now the beach the beach ones I guess is what you're you're so well known for. Was that fun to do or was that just an annoyance? Do you think? Uh, they were an absolute blast. I mean, we were young kids and we had a great time on the beach and you know it was like uh, playing with a camera that you didn't even know that was there. You know, it was, we all knew each other. Annette Funicello and I had a great rapport. A great friendship and all the, the other kids, uh, the side kids there. We all had fun. We really went into the water. We did surfing. So we had a great time, and it showed up on the screen. Well, obviously, because everybody had such a great time watching it, and, and we all got to live vicariously you know, through your eyes and, and all the fun stuff that you guys did on, on the screen. Mm-hmm. Now, around the world, where, where have you played? What kinds of countries and, and, and what, what are the most well, exciting? You know, Charlie, I've been all around the world, I, but I would probably have to say the most interesting place to me was uh, at the end of the 60s, the government, our uh, American government, as an exchange, sent me over to a communistic country to perform and represent the United States, which was uh, Romania hmm. at the time. It was socialistic, co- communistic. And I went there uh, along with Louis Armstrong, and, and it was quite an experience for me. Now, how long when you were, when you were there? Did you just fly in and perform, or did you get a chance to see some of the country and stuff? No, I, I got to see some of the country. I went up to uh, Dracula's country there, Transylvania, which wasn't very far away. Hmm. Now, when you come to Vegas, um, what kinds of shows are you doing? It's you and Bobby, and, and do you do like a greatest hits type of thing, or do you do any requests yeah, for the audience? Yeah, yeah, Charlie, we're fortunate enough to have had a list of a lot of uh, Billboard chart records. I must have had, I don't know, 12, 15, and Bobby, pretty much the same, too. So we get a chance to reminisce and do that, but we also extend ourselves and have a lot of fun on the stage. And a lot of people have said to us, Guy, you, you guys are having so much fun. It reminds me of the old days of the Rat Pack having a good time on stage. Really? And that's, you know, we're the last of a breed that uh, I guess does that kind of a show for a generation that uh, wants to see it again and for those who have never seen it would like to see it for the first time. Well, the thing that's amazing is that, that you and, and, and the other guys and gals from your generation, um, and I'm of that generation too, I mean, have, have lasted. I mean, it's so many people who were performing, you know, back in the 60s and 70s are still performing and still doing a great job. It, it well, yeah, I, I think we come out of a, of a world uh, of show business to where the most important thing was learning your craft and being able to perform um, 